recording. This is actually day 23 of the 120 design lessons. They're kind of sporadic, see? Because uh, sometimes we're busy building things. If you look at the the day, it's actually day 24 detail. Uh, do download the carport file and and you can also take a look at it in Sweet Home. But the FreeCAD is the most important. FreeCAD is this thing right here. That's that's what it looks like. Um, I'm able to open it in those, um, you guys in Sweet Home. Yeah. In the, in the yeah, it's kind of like if I have three monitors here, so I can I can manipulate, but it's kind of hard to keep all track of all the windows. So so as a priority, open up the open up the the FreeCAD files, so, or you can just take a look at my screen because I want to describe what this carport is about and what the concept is. So uh, take a look at my screen. Also in Freecat in a sweet home, just for perspective. So that's that's the actual. That's what's going on there, right? That's pretty clear. So there's a. It's a nice patio. Like for example, on CD Go Home One, I go out there all the time, do yoga, and it's a nice. It's like you can look at your your dominion from your carport. It's kind of nice. You're more in the trees, and it's airy. So it's a it's a good usable space. You can go out there with a beach umbrella or whatever um, it's it's a nice space but it also functions as a, as a place for a car so it's a carport but it's not a garage because it's not enclosed a, a garage would be enclosed uh, and the structure is it's the same as a lot of similarity to what we've done before you've got um, the plywood that's three-quarter OSB and then on top of it is EPDM, so that this structure is completely watertight. And then there's the door from the second story, which we're now climbing up through the ladder. And the carport will use it to get onto the roof, so you can actually close up the, the structure and actually do the remainder of the work that's needed. But it's a good access point to get to the roof in an easy way. It's going to be below the door a little bit because you want drain, you don't want water to be going inside your door. So the only consideration is this has got to be like a little bit below the door. And here, uh, it's actually not super correct because it looks like it's even with the door. So if you actually look at this here, this is more. I'm going to open up another file. I actually added this to the to the master file. Um, take a look at this here. The master file now has got this added. Nice. Uh, but yeah, it, it was cool. Like I, I plugged it right in, and it was exact. It was exactly correct. Like I want it to be four inches below the second floor. That's how I drew it up. And how did I draw it up? Well, I just started by doing a simple document, like using all the known heights. Like for example, we know this is, you know, your 107 point six two five for the wall module. You got a bottom plate. You got the foundation, mm -hmm. like you got all the known suspect quantities here. Like that's the top plate that we've seen. That's the second story platform. That's the OSB. And when I drew this against the known quantities in FreeCAD, I kind of had this detail here. And using this exact size, which I cut, which I went and and I slanted this by, remember the number, 1.2 degrees? Yeah, I slanted it 1.2 degrees for four inch rise against 16 feet. And then you got this post on the other side. Uh, and that's basically what the, what the shape was. So from there I went, and this is gonna be sunk like, uh, the frost line here is 30 inches. So this is sunk 30 inches. Um, and there's there's our insulation on the side of the house too and then there's going to be more insulation which is the shallow frost protective footer which means that uh, this is as effective as if you had the distance going down into the side is equal to how much you're as if you send this insulation down but you're not digging so this is an effective way to do insulation without digging too much if you want to save on digging and that's easy because otherwise you have to have a backhoe to, to dig a deeper, much deeper, a three foot, whatever trench. Um, but that's the basic shape. And then fr from there went to this, just drew it out. So it's a similar kind of um, truss structure. Now the trusses are, 
because this is raised and it's not like it's it's basically EPDM and platform on stilts here so it actually by code it has to be the spacing actually has to be a little tighter it's actually 16 inches typically we're used to 24 inch spacings and also the other detail here is we're gonna have joist hangers hanging these things up because um, now the this is not laying on anything so we need hangers we didn't use joist hangers before because all the time the joists were resting upon the top plate here they're not here you gotta hang them using 2x12 joist hangers and I just drew those in now you also notch the these are six by six posts on the far side so away from the house um, so on the far side these long posts here those are six by six they're actually quite big you'll see them in real life they're pretty heavy six by six about 14 foot long uh, so but they're gonna end up being hundred fifty <coughs> inches uh, the stock is uh, 14 foot, I believe, but they're going to end up being 150 if you consider the whole height uh, down to below the, the grade there, 30 inches below the grade. <coughs> six by six, they're notched. So if you look at that detail there, there there's a notch there. Like if you take a, get rid of the roof. Um, Okay, that's actually so. These two, two beams there, they're they're resting on these six by six posts, but there's a notch cut out. Uh, so who can tell me this distance here, from here to there? What is that distance? So that's that's is that three or yeah, half half of the um, post. Yeah, two. Yeah, two. Well, three as in not half the post, because the post would be actually 5.5. .5. So a 6 by 6 is really 5.5 .5 by 5.5. .5. So you got to notch okay. that's 3 okay. inches. you got to notch out 3 inch here. And that's for all the three posts. you got to notch them. Now also these other posts here, uh, because the... Uh, What is it there? They're actually notched here. It's a single one, so there's a single one notched on these ones, and these are actually four by fours. Uh, the bulk of the weight is laying on these six by sixes here. Then there's four by four that define the doorway. So there's eight feet of doorway, so you can get your car in there. But these are notched too. And that notch is what? What is the size of that notch there? What is that? One and a half. Yeah. <coughs> and if you look at it from the side, there's like a little gap there because it's a slight slant. But altogether, this isn't exactly, almost exactly 192. Because you have that little tiny slope, it actually increases the length. So at the top, the plywood, like if you measure, let's look at maybe the top. If we measure from plywood from the edge to the edge, what is that? Um, what are you, what's your guess here? 192, so that's 16 feet exactly. This is 16 by 16 exactly, so the same thing as before, just like with the, with the house. You got 16 by 32 here, you got 16 by 16. That means you're gonna fit uh, eight sheets of plywood, so like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then halves, that's seven, and that's eight. So once again, we're staggering the, the seams, so there's full ones in these rows, and then half, there's a full one and two halves in here. So that's what we got to do. Now, how, how long are... So then the cut list is you got these posts, you got to cut them to the length. Cause we, it's already measured. The height is defined. Good. So if you look at this, maybe um, look at the sketch under that. 150 inches. That's what the CAD says. So I'm going to go by the CAD. Since this is pretty tight here, we know we, we're pretty good here. 
Um, all the dimensions here are right. The CAD says it's 150 inches. So let's cut this post from, I think it's 14 to begin with. And what's 14 feet? 14 times 12. It's 168. So we're going to cut a, like 18 inches off, the, off it. Uh, so that's 150. And then we're going to notch this. So now, as far as this depth of this notch, how far down is this depth of this notch? Oh wait, I think I drew, oh yeah, you see the problem here, I drew it, this is the notch here, not here, the, the notch, yeah, you see the mistake here, the, the notch. Oh, you just, like you rotated, um, yeah. blade, and then you have the second plate that, yeah. that'll come in there and close it out. Yeah, this is actually, um, that's actually, so we don't get completely, yeah, let's actually correct this here. So, this notch here, let's get rid of that. You see how it's, the notch should be cut out here three inches instead of that three inches of meat. The notch should right. instead be, um, <coughs> well, we know this, this is going to be 5.5. That's your six by six post. Um, oh yeah, you have to uh, undo the constraint on the other side, and then yeah. Oh, there you go. There we undo go. this constraint, and then probably I'll move this like this, and then really I want to get rid of this thing and go like this, like this, like this. So I actually want to get rid of that one and redraw that. To there. So I'm going to now make that a point. Make that a point. Make this vertical. Now, so who can, who can tell me this distance here? The green? So that's just 1.5? Or, or is this the 3? Three? 3. That's for the double. Double plate cut out. And then therefore this this distance there is going to be what? 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. And then, well actually let's get, we'll make this into one line. Turn it into a point there. Make sure that's a point and make this horizontal. <coughs> this vertical. Yeah, so now that's right. And then this distance here, what is that going to be? What do we say? Uh, 150 inches. Yep. 150. So that's good. So that's the. All this is is just a sidewise profile of this. Yeah, now that's corrected. Um, but yeah, 150, there's the 2.5 there. There's this three inch notch. And this distance here is what? The vertical notch? This vertical piece. 11.5. 11.25. That's 11 by 11, oh, uh, 2 by 12. So that's okay. a 2 by 12. <coughs> yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Now, how do you get those pulse, pulse holes down there? What do you use? We got an auger, just one of those Harbor Freight augers. Uh, this is it. Industry standard factory farm. Google Harbor Freight Auger. And this is what you do. It's six inches, so we have to kind of like dig it, dig a couple of holes because the six inch, we'll dig like one, two holes next to each other, and then that should remount to to about six inches. 
Uh, it's pretty quick. It's like it's like a couple of minutes. It's it's heavy on your hands. You don't want to be doing this all day. Um, but for six holes, that's perfect. Um, let's copy that. Um, so procedure, game plan, procedure. So got to auger the holes here. Little grade mark and auger pulse holes. Okay, let's talk about the joists uh, and and pulse holes. So let's so the pulse holes. Like the thing about that. So now we're talking about a precision location of this this car part. You can't just poke a bunch of holes and expect it to fit. We got to be pretty exact. So what that means is, let's look at how how would you actually marking so duplicate the slide marking is uh, marking is an important point so let's see but you guys can edit this too so edit this with me um, edit this with me here how would you mark this thing Well, you got the existing house structure. What are you going to do? What's the marking procedure? What's step number one? Let's review the dimensions just a little bit. So, um, I think probably this is the most important thing to note. But from the sheathing, if you examine that, well, we know it's 192 inches because to the edge of the plywood there, we said it's 192. Now, how exact to 192 is it? It's actually 192 and a quarter. Um, that I described that here, but a quarter you won't be able to see for this pulse hole. So, um, look at this. Gap adds about a quarter to the overall length. That gap there is about a quarter. And then that gap there is about a quarter down there too. Um, the way the geometry works out, that means the entire s slope length of the carport is 192. So basically the, the concept here, we have 192.25, which is 16 feet and a quarter inch. Yeah, well, so you won't be able to see the difference, but I guess just mark it at 16 and a quarter, so you got that quarter, you know, you're not compounding errors, but 16 and a quarter is the actual overall length. So if we know that, the other dimension that we have to know is actually here. We know that the posts are actually three and a half inches cantilevered off the end. And why is that? It actually has to do with the spans of a 2 by 12 and it has to be that kind of, we actually have to move it in very slightly um, for reasons of structure, but that's, uh, let's assume that for now, uh, let's assume this cantilever, so this is important here, uh, that's spaced out on each end, right? So where does that mean the post is going to be when we mark it? 16 feet out we got to put the mark for the hole actual hole it's three and a half inches off the off that 16 foot so if you have so what is so this distance what's important here is this distance that distance what is that between the arrows? I just uh, so let's get some get specific on the distances. What is that distance there? Sixteen feet. Yeah. So that's sixteen feet exactly. So therefore, we got to mark in the posts at three and a half inches inside of that so 
that's that's the deal. We got the market on the ground. So how do you get a straight line from the edge of the house to the? So this is this is the question. How do you get a straight line from? So now we got to do stuff like. This is, this is like. It's not trivial, I don't say. It's because you got to think about it how you actually do it. But once you get the hang of it, it's easy. But I wouldn't say it's trivial because you got to think about it. So how do you get a line that's straight? You know, say you want to continue this line straight across, or you're not slanted or whatever. What's well, the easiest way to do it? What will people suggest? So you got these. Well, so the car park is going to be like 16 feet here, right? Um, well, how do we? You do have to this? use measuring tape. You have to have two people, and then maybe another person to mark it exactly. But that's that's still a, so like three people to to mark holes at the location first. Okay. Use something in the ground to, to just mark the area where you would drill the hole. How do you, why would you need three people? To the, so you could use measuring tape or you could use the, the loose one that we use to measure the diagonals. Yeah, we're good for the regular measuring tape. So let's but how do you, how do people typically mark lines? What do they do? They use string. Is it yeah. string? String. And what else do they do? Put a stake. Yeah, what do we have for stakes? What's a good stake? Let's use a rebar stake. Right, in the, yeah. in the would be hole. Would be hole. Well, um, let's be really exact at it. We, since we know we can measure from this side, we can mark. You can't, like, you can't measure 16 to that point, right? Because it's a slant already. So you got to be, like, right here. You got to start, like, somewhere in the corner. Or thereabouts. Stick a rebar stake in. Sixteen feet. Let's let's use the one quarter inch if we could. Away from the siding. It's actually we're measuring away from the siding since we're attaching to the siding. Um, well, also you can put it there. You can put it there, but you can't. It can't be there once you're actually digging because it's in your way, and you gotta move, remove the string after you're digging. So it's like. How do you do this so you don't do this 10 times doing things back and forth? Well, start by this, step one. I would do this as step one. Uh, then what? Uh, I would do it for step two. This is what I would do. I would do... Let's remember this. Uh, I'm going to make this suggestion. So we do this, and then we do this. We put some more more of these in. So, you, so say you got, well, you stick a rebar stake in. Stick another. Stick in two rebar stakes. Stick another two rebar stakes farther away where it's not in the way anymore. Yeah, but what does that get you? That isn't. So we're trying to get this. We want to make sure that this angle here is the right angle. How do you, how do you make sure you you marked it at a straight line? I would say what you have to do there is really do the. I don't see any other way but doing the cross strings to make sure that. You're exactly in line because the cross strings. Yeah, no, I wouldn't forget about this. Do the cross strings. So, in other words, you're doing cross strings or cross measure it. Cross measure.
I guess. Because you'll know that you're exactly square only when those two lines, when you, those two measurements are equal. In other words, you can't, you cannot be at those exact points if these strings, so let's number them, cross measure one and two. So this is, so this is point, the line one. Because this is like, if you go out there and like, if you don't think about it, and just line this procedure out, will be like back and forth going like, oh no, we did this, we did that, I've done it. Um, but you gotta just get clear on the procedure. So I would say cross measure of one and two and, and move, and move the stakes. Until one equals two. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean you haven't done, for example, what if, okay, so that's, but that could also be true if your point is there, and your point is there too. Uh, like, that distance would also be the same, one and two would also be the same for, for these other points, right? These outside points. So you'd have to take another measurement, and that is three, which is the distance between them has to be exactly 16 feet. While measuring, so like while measuring three. While, so it's, uh, while three equals 192 inches. So you gotta, you, you have to make, like after you get the two, one equal to two, you check three. So you measure one and two, you get equality of one and two. Once you attain equality, then you measure three. So after obtaining, after obtaining one equals two, measure three. Move stakes until three equals one ninety two inches. Does that make sense? And that's that could be pretty quick, that's like so you get the the one equals two. Cause I mean you can in principle go try to do a straight line from the house to just continuing it there, but I don't think it's as reliable as the cross measure. Because you can, for example, do like a very long string like all along the house and do something like this maybe. And that would define exactly where that point has to be. Uh, that's another way, but that's kind of like more walking around. You gotta go to the far end of the house. You gotta stick in a stake there. So I think the one and two is an easier way to go. So any comments on this? Does that make sense? Or is, the, is there a better method to measure it? In other words, you, you actually fix the lengths of one and two. So in other words, you tie the string on the rebars at the uh, at those lengths. Oh, how about, oh, actually. And then, and then you can move them about to get three. Yeah, that, we can actually do better than this, because we can use math, and we don't have to do three anymore. Hmm. So check this out. So let's so let's do this try one. I think there's an easier way. Try one. Um, so let's do try two. Because you know what one and two are going to be by math. Therefore, you don't have to measure three anymore. So so you do this. Cross measure one and two and move move stakes until. One equals not two, but a specific number. What is that number? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So we get 192.25 squared. And plus 192. Cross measure line one and two. So, so you got, yeah, 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 yeah. So you just need the one point. Stick in those two stakes and then measure one until it equals twenty-two and seven and three quarters. And then step three is measure two. say verify, so then you can verify that 3 is exactly 16 feet. I think that's better. So forget about these points. Okay. Is that better? So can you yep, so saying, the long sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, so the long diagonals are twenty two foot seven inches and a quarter and then three, three should be sixteen. Yeah. Three. That will verify that your clawed cross lines are, are good. And I would say we probably stick to our stakes in a way, 16 and a quarter away, and put a string on it. Because then once you start moving these, you want to make sure that you're moving those along the line, not at some angle. From the siding and hang a string between them. Right, because you want to make sure you're moving along this line, not at some angle of that line. Cross measure line, line one. Well, let's number these things. So, well, let's measure more. Let's do A.
I want to see this be like seamless when we get out there. We just do it and it's done. Um, and we're not fumbling around, so. Yeah. So like that. So you got N, B. The actual uh, position of the hole will be, what was that, three and a half inches away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've got, so, so then step five, yeah. So let's do that. Measure, yeah, so put in a, right, put in a stake. So measure, like put a pebble there, put in a stake until you're just exactly ready to, to auger. Um, mark 3.5, well it's not exactly 3.5 yet, we want to mark the center so what is that? Because you got to account for the width of the post. So it's 3.5 plus half of uh, five. Yeah. Calculation is uh, three point five inch <coughs> plus one half of five point five. What is that six point two five? Six point two five. So three point five plus two point seven five. Let's put uh, C. Let's put this as C. Mark C. At. From A and B. Yeah. At C. where we dig the holes, so we stick the auger in there, but maybe rather than, um, because the auger is six inch diameter, we might want to put that, so for 6.25 is the center, do two holes, like maybe one at, yeah, actually, let's make this very specific. actually put that on a separate page because you have to account for how the auger digs and and you you can put two holes that are very close to each other but not exactly touching and just from experience so augering I, I would say do like two holes next to each other so that the six six inch post will definitely fit in there but not too huge so I think two of them would be pretty good. Two of them side by side. 
because then you can also take that auger and kind of like ream it out a little bit by moving the auger side to side a little bit too and uh, but I think it's probably easiest to do two individual holes so that you're doing going straight down and then kind of like break the ground between them so how do you do this so let's do step number step seven longer two holes uh, separated by, I don't know, like two inches. So so ideally, uh, if you were just to dig one hole, how big should the diameter be? Uh, like eight inches? Yeah. So let's zoom this, zoom this out to... Uh, So we got we got this mark C. So C is where we want to let's get rid of A. Let's get rid of so we our final point was point C and D. That's where we ended up with. get rid of all the extraneous stuff here. So we got these points C and D. Let's expand this a little bit so we can uh, look at this more closely. So instead of C and D, what I would do is, uh, so C and D are points. Do your augers and I'll, I'll draw these larger, like the auger holes. Have them go like, I'll call them black. Do them like a couple inches from each other, like three inches from each other, and that way you can actually dig them without running it from one to the next. Um, mm -hmm. Twelve. Yeah, like three inches. Power two holes separated by say three inches. Three inches. That way you can, like when you dig down, you're going to break into the other one, and that makes it difficult to finish the hole straight down. So that distance is like three inches. Does that sound good? So do that. And then when when we're turning that into one hole, you like at the end, you just basically ream out the hole with the auger, so you you fall into the other hole. But you need to go all the way down. Does that make sense? Does that explanation make sense? You have to dig all the way down before you actually ream. So I'm going to actually make this explicit here. Separated by three inches. Um, so do this for one and another. Because I guess you guys haven't done... Have you guys augered holes before? No. No. Yeah, so I need to yeah. explain all this. I've done some post holes. Say it again? Uh, yeah, I've done some post holes for um, uh, fencing fencing a piece of land. Okay. But it was just one hole, one hole each for. Okay. Yeah. So. Ap so after these are fully dug, and that's only about it's only about thirty inches. It's only like two and a half feet. Um. write this down. Well, this is because we want to teach anybody who wants to do this. Now, of course, you can take some videos, but written, written works too. So after fully dug 30 inches, then join the holes by reaming them out 
Meaning, like, you move the tilt auger along line. So you just Can you get me to and then you break the saw between them. I mean, it's obvious. You'll see it. But you gotta dig all the way down first. Don't, don't like, try to join them while you're digging. Can you get eight in uh, August? Yeah, or how big can it? That's oh. the obvious thing too. Now, if you look at this thing, I think it doesn't come with. Yeah, they, they got one. You could get an eight-inch bit too. We don't mm. have it, but it's it's not a big deal. It's just don't have a bit on hand. Um, and here's a pilot bit. Now what's that do? It allows you, so it doesn't really do any hole, but what it does let, let you do is dig your actual final hole straight down because it's kind of like pre-drilling holes. So this is a pre-drill pre bit there. Yeah, so they have it, but we don't have it. So um, do not try to join holes while still digging down. Yeah, it's easy. It's just, uh, just has to be explained. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, so you can put a note, this is with a, this is using six inch bit, it would work better to use eight inch. Now the eight inch is actually going to be, I mean, you'll see how hard it is to do six inch holes, eight inch would be like if you look at pi r squared, you know, um, 16 versus like 9, it's almost 2x the force. So I would actually probably not want to do an 8 inch hole by hand. The, the surface area of it is about 2x. Like when you go from 3 inch diameter to 4 inch diameter, pi r squared gets you to about 2x the force. This is already difficult to do by hand. Like, if you snag a rock, it moves you around, right? So, I would, by hand, unless you're digging in soft soil, or you know that you're free from rocks or tree roots, uh, there's a disadvantage to going to, to a larger bit if you're doing this by hand. Now, if you've got this on a machine, you can do 12 inch and 24 inch holes. But by hand, that's too much. It'll, it'll throw you around. Uh, but that's it. That's that. So yeah, we've got the magical number there being 22 feet 7 and 3 quarters. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So now we got C. Now what about... Oh yeah, but, but since we're also digging... We need to dig a couple more holes, though, because there's the other, other post holes. And for that, we only need one one hole because it's a four by four pulse but there's a uh, so we actually have to continue this um, from try let's duplicate because we've got more holes um, dig holes so this would be like more this part here was like addendum Remember this is seven. For the four by four posts. So we should label this. This is um uh holes for Six by six posts. Uh, um, we've got one more six by six in the middle. Uh, between C and D. Oh, sorry about that. Very good point. There we go. So let's call that E. And we, yeah, we, that we have, have to also <clears throat> mark pretty exactly. So if you have A and B, 
<clears throat> measure it exactly between A and B, so measure exactly at 8 feet. So mark B e at exactly 8 feet from A or B. four feet away from the house or from A, so um, mark four feet from A and B, so this would be F thing is remember that they're actually like south of the line uh, so yeah this is a details here but you're not drawing them on the line because they're not they're actually like right here so that we have to make that explicit right because it's because it would be half of a three and a half south of that line like yeah yeah um so first of all that distance is four feet four feet It's actually south. I mean, how do we say that to the left? <laughs> and um, and how far to the to the to the lower? What's three point five divided by two? I believe. I think we got to make them one point seven five. Let's let's. Uh, I think we want to look at the CAD to remind ourselves what's going on. So, these posts are exactly. So if this is you know the sixteen by sixteen platform, the edge of the post is on the on the edge of the platform, but the center of the post where you're actually digging the hole is going to be half of its width, right? So you got to do 3.5 divided by 2. So these are 3.5 by 3.5 posts. These are 5.5 by 5.5. Oh, so we actually have to... Oh, okay, so we forgot that detail. and that, That's important because um, if you look at these ones, you see what I'm saying here? We're not actually drawing that on this line. We're actually drawing it to the left of the line for the six by six posts too. Oh, oh that's that is important because that would meant that we've got like a three inch slant to those posts. So we're going to have to go in by half of 5.5. 5. 
So as, as I said, this is not trivial. You got to think about all these details, and the procedure is very specific. Um, so if we go here, so we got the rebar stakes. So I think we probably want to say after we mark all of this, then we have to mark in, like from, from the points we just obtained, we got to move those in by 5.5 .5 divided by 2. So 2.75. So should we say, and move 2.75 inches to the house, towards the house? Is that clear, or should we write it, just mark these first and then move all over? Or maybe just move the line from A to B in Maybe just do it one step at a time so we can keep counting of this. So we got the 16 foot line. Just keep it there. Probably just move it 6.25 from A and 2.75 towards the house. Is that, I think that's pretty clear, right? So we'll just say, say this here. And let's do the picture. I'm going to put, I'll just put little arrows. Um, I'm going to emphasize that. I think we can represent that by putting little arrows pointing towards the house here. So just do a little arrow. Does that make it clear? Yeah. So, yeah, so those three holes are going to move in 2.75 inches. So here, it's four feet to the left and Do the little arrow. Let's do, yeah, I think we can do it one step at a time like this. And then,
something like that. Four feet to the left and one point seven. stuff would be These will be single holes. Just yeah. Uh, what, what do you fill the holes with? You fill them with concrete. Cement, yeah. Concrete. Yeah. So we got bags of concrete. That's in the shop. siding I think that that kind of does it right or did we miss anything I think that's pretty much it those are four feet away oh but hold on a second they're four feet uh, but we also have to account for if they're four feet the edge of these posts is four feet so we once again have to come in a little bit in by the diameter of the post so actually we need to modify that right so to be specific this has to come in a little way it has to go like that just a little <coughs> see what I'm talking about because the distance is four feet that's a panel panels width but that means the post it's not going to be centered on the four feet, it's going to be a little bit to the right here. So let's expand on that. And 1.75 N and N. So it's going to be 1.7 inch down plus 1.75 inch to the right. 
I mean, when you oversize the hole, you can kind of shake the pulse <coughs> around a little bit, but at times you won't be, like if your hole, you have to consider this 1.75 inches because if the hole is just the right size or just, you know, like a couple inches bigger, if you don't consider this 1.75 inches, you'll be, you'll be off. So... But it, it, isn't the four feet to the center of the the post? Um. Oh, oh, oh. Because we already have the center. It's. It wouldn't be to the center of the post. It's to the edge of the post. Okay. So look at the CAD. See that? It's to the edge of the post. That's a four foot panel. All right. Okay. Right? So the center is actually yeah. that one point seven. You know. It's yeah. inset, so it's going up here and to the right here. Yeah. Yeah, so we do have to do that. Um, I mean, we already inset these ones, but we're measuring from the original line. Right, so the that's why we left this line here, this original line, that's where we're measuring from. Um, yeah so we leave that stake we should leave that stake with a string in uh, throughout the process so let's put try one at the end since that didn't work really so. marking so so we're hanging a string here from A to B, and we leave that string throughout. So we're here, and here we actually took away the cross string. Well, and uh, I'd like this these lines to represent the string. So maybe <coughs> we'll get one of these here. Because um, there isn't really no string there, we're just measuring the tape there. But here we're maybe let's make them a different different sign, such as maybe like this. Maybe do that. So that's the actual string that's hanging there. Well, that's the tape being measured. But here we got rid of that. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe change these to the dotted line so we know that's actually not string hanging but just reference points. Uh, but this string here is actually hanging still there so we can get our reference for F and G. So yeah, we got to change here. So plus <laughs> so four feet from the house siding plus one point seven down plus seven five left. Right? So we gotta do our little arrow to the left here. Um, I should copy this. Some small arrows here. So these arrows go down here. But also to this side here.
So now we go a little towards the house. <laughs> That's, that's about right. Yeah. So you see this very simple procedure of where the posts go. It's actually got a quite a bit of detail that you really need to keep track of. And that's why we would have been there like doing things 10 times if we didn't go through this here. Because the pen is mightier than the sword. It's quicker to just draw it out and then as opposed to like 10 times do it in the field because we'd be like oh wait we gotta do it different oh wait we gotta do it different. except we actually were doing it so we're spending a lot of time doing that that's why these diagrams are very helpful okay so i think that pretty much addresses so is that really, everyone got any questions on there is does that make sense or is that procedure maybe not right so we know we need the posts it's essentially so just to review in logic it's we've got this 16 by 16 platform it's got posts that are 16 feet away but the point is the holes for those things are not 16 feet away they're inset because the posts have a finite width and same for the the holes for the four by four posts yeah they're four <laughs> feet in but you gotta inset them or offset them by the thickness of the post itself so that's that's pretty clear and here well, let's see well didn't we do the proper offsets here though we did because um, yeah here we did the offset by um, <laughs> Let's see, is the right. offset proper here for the mm -hmm. 6 by 6 right. Sorry, say it again. Um, by 2.75 towards the house. Yeah, so we're going 2.75 to the house. So that's accounting for the thickness of the post. And as far as going, going down, we've added the 3.5. So actually, let's make an arrow there. That's 6.25. That's how we get it. All right. So we already accounted for that. We accounted with the half half of the 5.5. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're good there. Mm -hmm. So that's the procedure. Uh, we're measuring 16 and a quarter away. We're getting the cross string to get, make sure that that line How do we describe this? We, we, we start by the default of which is 16 and a quarter away from the house, but we got to make sure that we're on these lines here by marking the cross cross locations. And those cross cross locations, as long as we're the 16 feet and a quarter away from the, the house, gener generally, then defining the 22, 7 and 3 quarters will locate the points exactly at A and B where they should be. So that's good. And we mark the, the points C, D, and E for the 6 by 6 posts and then the posts for the 4 by 4 size. Mm -hmm. For the 6 by 6 we do the double holes for six by six posts, one hole for four by four posts. And why is that? Because would a because what's a cross if you've got five point five 
like because a six inch hole won't fit a, a 5.5 inch post because 5.5 times it's actually squared of it's actually times one squared of two so the the diagonal of this post is actually 7.7 7. it's like 7.8 it's um, a little larger. So when we do, do these two holes, we kind of got to ream just a little bit. Um, so the, the auger bit is six. The hole size, the, the, the edge to edge distance is actually 7.7. 7. I think two holes will be fine because it's not accurately six. It's going to be a little bigger than that. Um, let's try the two holes like that. If not, we, we go to something like this where we got to do actually three holes. Um, I don't know, I think the two holes zoomed out, I think they'll be fine. They look radioactive. All right. Um, so that's that. Um, what else? So, game plan and procedure. Uh, overall procedures here. So we got to do this little side grading. So cutting the post to length, cutting the joist. Um, there's notching the posts. So there's three units of the. What are the sizes of the notches? Three inch by. 11.25 inch for the 6 by notch for the 6 by 6 posts. There's uh, 4 1.5 inch by 11.25 inch notch for the 4 by 4 posts. And then there's, uh, yeah, there's the, for the two by fours, you can see that in the CAD, but uh, that's the length you can read off this CAD here. It's 106.5 for the length of the, this post here, which I drew in a Z direction, so that's why I can only look at it as the pad dimension. So it's 106.5, but that's that's the 106.5 here. These are all stained and treated. Uh, that's a big pile that we have. Uh, where the trailer is in the materials area. We'll, we'll go there. So you got to notch the posts, cut, cut the joists. Now for the, there's also the procedure of marking the joist locations. So, so how we did the, the blocking before. Right now, I don't think we have to do blocking. I think we, what we want to do is put in the, so mark the joists. And this is every 16 inches. So at the end, there's, you don't need to mark the end, but every 16 inches from then on, and then attach the joist hanger every 16 inch down the middle, so down the middle of your mark. Does that make sense here? So if, you, if we're in this structure here, <coughs> so it's every 16 inches, and it's, um, so the first one is actually 16 inches from the edge, and it's, so it's actually pretty simple. Everything is 16 inches from the edge. which means um, if you draw the line at 16 inches, the joist hanger, so what is a joist hanger? These 
these things. Yeah, we'll look at the, yeah. So you attach these. Attach these every six inches. Uh, every sixteen. But these are the cutting is the these are 187.5, so it's basically 16s minus three two bys. So there's two bys, there's one two by twelve, and then another two by twelve here. Now on the side of the house, how do you attach this to the house? This board here is attached to the house with lag bolts, four and a half inch lag bolts. So this is attached to the house. At exactly the the correct height, which is here, that's the correct height right here. We can read the, read this exactly. So the easiest way to read it would be, I believe, four inches below, like where. Well, it's probably easiest to measure from the bottom of the siding, and that should be like three inches or so. Um, I believe that's going to be from there to the top of the board. It's about three inches, so do it three inches. Uh, that's the ledger. That's the board that's this one here. That's the ledger. It's attached to the house with lag bolts, four and a half inch lag bolts, like we used between the panels, similar to those a little longer in our case here. Uh, so that's the ledger there. Um, you don't have to measure from the bottom because we've got a measuring point right there. So the, the magic number is three inches below the lip of the, the siding here. But before we do that, there's siding. There's a gap of siding there. We need to cut that and fill that in. And that's that turns out to be 24 inches. Let's measure that. Um, let's see. 24 and a quarter. I mean, we can actually do it 24. Is so what happens here? We're gonna. This is called a can strip. This this triangular piece, but that's basically a two by slip at an angle, so that when we have the EPDM going up here, there's not a sharp corner, so that it doesn't rip. This prevents it from ripping by the EPDM going here, and then we're gonna stick the EPDM under the siding. Actually, eight inches is the requirement. Um, so we we loosen some of these screws here and slip the the epdm rubber underneath the the panel so that there's a nice water seal there um, that's just a cross sectional view i would say we, t we take the uh, since 24 and a quarter and 24 that's pretty similar that this gap here that we have uh, we can we can make it slightly bigger that's perfectly fine so if we make this therefore we can make this here actually 24 inches uh, so it's we're not wasting any any material so cut four strips of 24 inch uh, for the siding that we have. <laughs> so, cut four strips of siding. Of exterior siding. The red stuff. Uh, that will be 24 inches long um, by 48 inches wide. So that's what goes in here. Uh, before we put the ledger on, we need that siding on. In other words, we, we have to complete that side of the house there. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of cutting up front, and then for the OSB, there's there's cuts of two sheets. So so these two sheets, these four pieces here, come out of two sheets. The rest of our of them are full sheets, so that we can cut into halves on the site. So 
also cut two sheets of uh, Half, so you get four to get four halves. And if you look at the cat, anything else? So we've got the pulse, we've got the uh, there's the joist, there's the joist hangers. Now, just like before. Were those uh, 16 footers, did we cut them to length to be exactly 16 because they were like a little bit above? Because that's what you have to do here. Was that the case before? We had to trim them down a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they were like, it was less than an inch in most cases, but yeah. they were cut to 16. Exactly. <laughs> right, and so we have to include that as one of the steps here. So for the joists, the first thing is get three of them that are 16 foot exact trim the end so three of them if you look at the cat so the, the ones that are exactly the 16s are this one here so this one that one and the ledger those are all exactly 16s Otherwise, all the other ones are in between those. That means they're shorter by three thicknesses of the two bys. And that's where you get the number 187.5. Because 187.5 plus three widths, that's 4.5, that equals 16 feet. Or 192 inches. So that that explains why that is 187.5. Now there's one mid joist. You see the cad? The middle one happens to fall on the post. So we gotta trim off another 2.5 inches from it. And that's the one right there. And that one is the mid joist there. It's 185 inch long. That one. Altogether there's um, 16. 12 plus 3 plus 1. <coughs> so cutting posts, notching the posts, cutting joists, cutting the LSB, uh, exterior siding. Yeah, that's it. We have to just select a piece of siding that's like a color comparable to what's back there so we don't uh, yeah so the color scheme like we have to actually what happened is because of the panels are kind of different colors we gotta shift a couple of them uh, there's some that are really off like one is dark and one is light so when there's not too many there's just a few we'll, we'll just have to shift them around to make it look uniform because it looks kind of weird right now uh, not too big a task it means detaching the exterior siding and then reattaching on another, on another panel. Yeah, so that's quite a bit. Um, so we've got this procedure here. We've got cutting stuff, um, marking the joist. Someone can do that. So let's cut plywood. Oh yeah, that, that I already said. Cut four strips. Mark and auger pulse holes. So that's going to be, that's going to be I mean, we've got the exact procedure here. Let's see how quickly we can do it. It shouldn't be too, too long. We, if we can work exactly off this diagram, um, you know, the question is, how long does it take? So altogether, how many holes do we have? We have three, four, five, six, seven, but we are doing doubles for three of them. So we got four plus six, it's 10 holes. And each hole is only a few minutes, so that can go very quickly. I mean, the auger is like one or two minutes per hole if you're going straight down. So that that's uh, that should be quite manageable. Just just as long as we put in the marks. What I would do is take a hammer and put in our B-bar stake exactly in a place that we need to be. I think that's the that's the wise thing to do. 
the rebar stakes are good for marking because you can use a hammer and make them go into any type of soil. You've got a bunch of those stakes there. Uh, so hammers and rebar stakes. And then string, there's some string on the side there. I saw some. So we can do the string between A and B. So it will be useful to print out uh, slides or just put that on your cell phone. Slides 6, 7, and 8. Um, or just download this whole document. What I do is just do download PDF. And then send it to yourself an email, open it up in your cell phone. So carport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any questions on this? Not everything. I posted the link in uh, Discord, so just go to it. Load the slides. Mm -hmm. So first step would be uh, get uh, all the materials. And it's probably easiest to do the, let's see, where to do the cutting, right where the materials are. So that, yeah, I think probably where the materials are. As far as the joists, that's a sliding, sliding miter saw. And we've got two of those there, so we should set up at the site. Uh, right there's that covered structure there, so we can set up the two saws over there. That would probably be the easiest to cut the joists and do the marking, do the notching. The notch. So how do we notch a a six by six post? Um, easiest would be uh, the the circular saws can go only two point five inches in. So if you cut from one side and then cut from the other side, that gets you really close. And the rest I think we can do with a reciprocating saw or just even a hand saw, just a, uh, cause then you got half an inch of wood left if you cut it with a circular saw. So probably like circular saw and then just finish it off with a hand saw or the reciprocating saw. Hand saw is just as quick as a reciprocating saw pretty much um, on this kind of wood. Mm -hmm. So circular saw plus reciprocating our hand saw. As far as attaching the joist hangers, we want to use the same kind of nails that we used, which are the 10D nails. Um, so that when we, so the procedure is when we're on the side there, if you look at the, oh yeah, so what's the overall flow? In fact, the most ideal way to do it is do all the holes at once so that we're, you know, we've got them all dug. But put in the three stakes, the three large stakes into the holes, and put the put these these what do you call them uh, beams here, and then if we insert like at least one of the joists then you'll know exactly where the right, correct location of the top of the, of the post will be. So we're going to cut these posts to length, there's going to be holes there. The ledger is going to define, so the ledger makes it unambiguous for where one, p, one part of this carport is. That's definitely there, and we know the exact location. Now everything's up in the air here. But the point of reference would be making sure that you've got that four inches of drop. And how, what's the easiest way to do that? Probably if we shoot a laser with the laser beam at the top here, then you can measure the, the four inches from a laser. Uh, we've got the lasers that do the, the two, two cross beams. So maybe we, like after we have the uh, say that the beam is here already, just put the laser right on top of the beam and measure the distance from the beam like on this bottom edge here, make sure it's four inches lower, just measuring with a tape. 
that's one way to do it. Or like a, just a standard level, uh, we could take like a long beam, just put it across here, and put a level on top of it. And if it's level and then the, there would be a 4 inch drop here, then that's where we're good. Uh, but we have to have a piece of uh, 16 foot piece of uh, material to, to lay it across the joist here. So probably the easiest is the laser level where if you can see the mark in the daytime, it's, it's kind of tricky to see the mark in the daytime, but I think, I think we can see it. And the point is just make sure that there's a slight slope here that that everything is working out but as long as you've got just a little drop that's that's what we need for rainfall like you don't want water pooling and then getting into the house uh, or just remaining on this and that kind of slope should be easily visible if it's four inches that's easily visible <clears throat> but the idea would be to put it uh notch everything cut this these posts to size probably put them in the holes and then attach this beam to it and after the ledger is up there we fit in one say one one of these beams and that will define your exact distance there and then we can put the concrete into the holes and fix those those holes up and that get, defines the slope here but this also here you just take a level to make sure that this is level across that's not dropping <clears throat> to any corner so once we put one one joist in, we, we pretty much define the entire geometry here, uh, which will locate the holes here. And then after that, the, the 4x4 posts, those we can put in like after everything is good. The, the, the main thing is for this to stand, you've got to have the 6x6 the six six legs, those three of them um, that are in place. They're big and heavy. The 6x6s, six they're quite big, so... Uh, that's a treat for us. I think kind of like two people have to carry the full length, length of it. So we stick them in a hole and, and make them stand vertically. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Possibly we can, uh, just to fix everything up, we might want to work with, this is, so th this is your three-legged fork here but we can do the outside two and then slip the third one in after we've got the outside two ones we'll, we'll see how it goes in practice but um, for this to stand we're going to need the two legs the third one we can put in after we have the two in place already so there's kind of like logistics and workflow issues how do you actually go about doing it the best way to think about it is that we have a, an exact location at the sa side of the house and we have to basically determine the level, and the height and, and level on the other side. But because these are, uh, you know, you've got this long beam, you can span the two legs, it's not too bad. We, we dig the holes, the, digs are, the dug holes are going to give us like enough, because we're also pre-cutting to 150 inches, the, all the measuring and pre-cutting and hole, hole drilling They'll get us to within a few inches, so it all, almost will be there, and we have to kind of like shimmy it around to get it to exactly that four inch drop, um, like plus minus one inch, I mean, something like that, that'll be fine, we don't have to be super, super precise, but the thing, with, with levels, just using a bubble level, we can get that plumbed relatively easily. Yeah. Wow, so that's a carport. And the challenging thing about it is, is here, like unlike the house where we had a foundation to where we know exactly where we put things, here you gotta measure them and figure them out. So that's that's kind of like, I would say the harder part. It's a little harder in terms of difficulty compared to the house where you, you know exactly where you have to put things. Here it's uh, measuring and then putting things in. And, and saw shifts around, so uh, this is kind of like the next level of of difficulty for probably uh, probably one of the more difficult parts of the house actually in terms of actually getting this built because because this is like free form you're you're working with getting measurements and building something at the same time yeah.
first thing is let's get to the materials. Let's take a little break, 10 minutes or so, and, and then get out there. So the pile of materials is um, at the parking lot there. That's, we'll see you out there at the gravel parking lot. So, yeah. So let's take like, let's, right. let's see you out there in like 15 minutes or so. Yep, you're ready. Yep. Alright guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you there. Alright, see you there.